ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'd like to look at the meeting. And do we have uh, uh, Sandra say the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. President. Can we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Moved by Trustee Jones, seconded by Trustee O'Connell. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. So, move to uh, meeting norms, which we all have. Same bias and blue. Um, um, and uh, report of action taken in closed session. Mr. Burns, would you like to report out? Yes, thank you, uh, President Tavera. Uh, members of the board, um, the uh, board did discuss two bid protests in closed session, did not take action in closed session on those items. They will be up for discussion later. Um, also wanted to inform the board that at last, at the last board meeting, the board authorized me to offer contracts of employment to several uh, positions in the district. So I'm here to announce to you some of those appointments. So we hired a, an assistant principal at Alisal High School, Mr. Pedro Adeza. And so he's going back to his home school. He's an alum from Alisal High previously um, uh, did some service for us there as a, an assistant principal. We also hired at La Paz Middle School um, a assistant principal intern, Mary Espinosa. Mary comes to us from the Alisal uh, Elementary School District. She'll be joining their team. We brought on uh, Gemalyn Peralta at Rancho San Juan High School. Gemalyn's been a long-term teacher in our district um, and is moving up into administrative a position at uh, Hardin Middle School. We also brought aboard uh, Bianca Andrade, um, who's a current teacher on campus, so she's moving up now to be in an assistant principal role. Um, at North Salinas High School, we hired Manuel Basalda. He comes to us from Soledad, um, and we're looking forward to having him with us. At Washington Middle School, we brought on uh, Laura Hinton as an assistant principal. She's currently a teacher there and moving up. And um, as I reported last time, we hired the Director of Pupil Personnel Services who started this week, Dr. Jenner, Jennifer Elliman. So several of these positions are uh, COVID-related positions for helping us manage COVID as we return to school. So those are my uh, reports from closed session. Thank you, sir. And next we have individuals desiring to address the board, Ms. Burns. Thank you, President Tabera, members of the board. So we have about 50 or so slips tonight and another 17, 16 emails. The board um, has a policy in terms of public comments. Uh, the individuals will be allowed three minutes to address the board and the board may limit total time for public input on any item to 20 minutes. The board understands that there's a great deal of um, energy and conversation around ethnic studies and critical race theory the majority of the slips tonight are in relation to those. The board feels that um, they would like to hear from folks from both sides of this issue, and they would like to have both sides do that within a 20 minute period of time each side. So 40 total minutes of time. And I'll do my best to call you in the order slips came in and, and uh, see if when you come up, if you can let me know um, your position and that way I can keep track as we move along. So uh, the first person and, and I'll have my administrative assistant keep track of time as well. So the first person is uh, Christine McQuistian. Better? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because <coughs> we asked uh, the speakers to speak without their mask on so that the, we can hear them. When you come to the podium you may take your mask off. Yes. Thank you. My name is Christine McQuistian. I'm speaking against critical race theory. So first, um, I want to apologize to Trustee Rojas at the last meeting. I did not include him on those who voted in April 2020 as those who voted against this radical critical race theory, so I apologize. I emailed him earlier. 
Um, I also want to thank Superintendent um, Burns for always quickly returning my email the last couple of weeks. Um, I had uh, emailed him concerning the curriculum. There was some question about whether or not there was really chance in the curriculum, and I thank you that you did send me the curriculum, and day one is a chance. So thank you so much for answering that. So there's two different types of ethnic studies. There's constructive ethnic studies, and then there's critical ethnic studies. Okay, there's two different types, which we really didn't talk about last time. Constructive ethnic studies builds bridges of understanding between cultures, which is beneficial to students. While critical ethnic studies puts people into categories of oppressor versus oppressed based on race. This curriculum is mentioned in the critical race theory curriculum 200 times the word oppressor is mentioned. The leaders of critical ethnic studies have role models that are militant Marxist revolutionaries. Even John Lewis and Martin Luther King have been left out of this critical ethnic studies because they're too passive. So sadly, on June 22nd, this board voted to teach the radical Marxist version of this curriculum rather than the, than the constructive one. This district does not have to adopt the critical ethnic studies. You can adopt the constructive studies. This is what neighboring districts have done. Monterey has done. They do not have the critical ethnic studies. The critical ethnic studies sets up oppositional relationships between students that leads to bullying, name calling, and shaming. Actually in Berkeley, after starting this critical ethnic studies program, they had to shut it down at a school district because it was calling so much bullying between the kids and shaming. I'm a pediatrician in Salinas. Um, I see teenagers in this school district of every race, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status. I absolutely love my job, the best job in the world. But sadly, I see teenagers every year from this district who are affected by bullying. And this curriculum will only make it worse. It is absolutely astounding to me as a physician that educators would actually think that this radical version of the curriculum that you've adopted would be a good thing. It blows my mind. No child should feel guilt or shame because of their God-given race or ethnicity. And I seriously hope that the members of this board will look into the Alliance for Constructive Ethnic Studies and adopt this curriculum rather than the critical race <laughs> curriculum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next I have uh, Miriam Corona Macias. And if, if somebody's in the hall too, we'll have to yell down the hall. When you speak, yes. Yeah. Hello, my name is Miriam. I used to go to Washington Middle School. Now I go to Salinas High School. I am Mexican, I am Latina. Every time I see a Latino or brown character in a movie or in a book or in history, I always get excited because, because I see someone like me. I would like to be able to learn my, my people's history at schools. I like to study it at, at home online, but online isn't very, isn't as reliable. I would like to learn it in a school setting. Um, some things in history might be hard to talk about, but we can handle it. If we can handle movies, gory movies, or scary movies, horror movies, then we can handle real history. I'm excited to learn the history of my people, history that I can relate to, and I hope I am not denied that right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, next I have um, Belen Macias. Hello, my name is Belen Macias. I am a Salinas resident. I have two children. My daughter will be entering Salinas High School this year. I'm here because I believe that our children deserve to learn a complete history and social studies of our world, our country, our state, and our local community. Our children are hungry for knowledge, and they're seeking it through social media. 
what they're getting may or may not be accurate or biased. But I don't want my kids to learn something as important as their history from YouTubers, TikTokers, or influencers. Our children deserve to learn true and complete history and social studies in a structured and controlled environment where there are teachers, credentialed professionals, excuse me, uh, teaching and guiding discussion in a safe environment where they can process what they are learning and ask questions. I also want the material, a, the material, a curriculum developed by professionals in an education, uh, from an educational field that understand the complexity of child development and develop and deliver material that is age appropriate and reviewed and approved by other professionals to make sure the curriculum meets standards. History and social studies have been taught in a tunnel vision format for too long. It's like a Disney version where all the inconvenient truths are swept under the rug. Moreover, it's about time that schools teach history and social studies that reflect the people of the community. Children, people in general, are more engaged and eager to learn history that reflect them. It's encouraging and empowering. Let's, let's not continue to deny that knowledge and empowerment to our kids. They deserve the truth. Thank you for your time. Next, I have Alexander Polodolov. Can you hear me now? Yes. My uh, history uh, of family is going to be very short just because I. Uh, want to explain why I arrived at the conclusion that I did as an adult here living in America. My parents were Russians who uh, actually moved to China uh, at the beginning of the 20th century uh, when they put the Trans-Siberian Railroad through. That brought many people that moved to, to China which was relatively undeveloped at that time. As you know, uh, since 1921, the Chinese Communists just celebrated their 100 years uh, after taking over that uh, beautiful country. And when that happened, my parents and grandparents had to flee uh, to stay alive. So they uh, eventually came to America. And I grew up in a very multi-ethnic community, uh, actually in San Francisco where we had Russian communities, we had Chinese communities, we had black communities, we had brown communities, uh, we had Jewish communities, you name it, we had everything. And uh, we all learned together and we all enjoyed that education that we got in those days. Uh, unfortunately, we see now that that is all changing in America. You don't get that anymore because they're trying to push critical uh, race theory uh, into our educational system. This is not education, uh, you must understand. This is indoctrination. Uh, our uh, test scores show it for our graduating high school students. Our education system is failing, okay? We don't need another failing part of it by uh, introducing some uh, Marxist indoctrination to the children from very young age all the way through high school and now even college and university. Okay, uh, if you, uh, I believe that if you're an American, you want to study something that will make a, you a person who respects American values of freedom, uh, school, and uh, family, and uh, freedom of religion, freedom of speech. In other words, the United States Constitution and that can be uh, learned uh, also in our schools. But I think that that's more important than studying uh, these uh, communist uh, Marxist ideologies 
that you've heard uh, even today here from a speaker where our children are taught that you have to have an oppressor and be oppressed and uh, that's the way the world is. There are people that don't need that and I don't think America needs that, okay? If they want to do that, they can go to communist China. My parents, grandparents fled from that, okay? Now we, uh, now we have uh, a, a lot of people that want to grow up in a free country, and that's America. Thank you. Thank you. Marty, um, Marty. Um, I'm against critical race theory. I, I believe that it's uh, hidden in the uh, ethnic studies program. Uh, <clears throat> its agenda is to separate, discriminate, spread hate and racism to our children. Uh, you work for us. We pay your salary. And I think that the parents should have a say in, in what's hidden in this curriculum. Uh, and um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Jesus, Jesus Valenzuela. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jesus Valenzuela. I am with Building Health Communities. Um, I am here to speak uh, in support of ethnic studies. And first and foremost, I want to thank the board for you know, your uh, willingness to listen to all sides and your commitment to democracy. We believe that ethnic studies is a field of research that has helped bring more clarity to the society that we operate in. It identifies and speaks about racism in a way that is productive. It gives students the ability to understand what systemic oppression is, and therefore be able to work to dismantle it. In our work, we do a lot of work for uh, governing for racial equity, right? And in our work, we understand that talking about race may make some people uncomfortable. Why that discomfort exists is something that only the person feeling it can explain. But our goal is to create more inclusive democracy. To do so, many of the old ways of doing things that created barriers for us to participate in democracy must be dismantled. I doubt that anyone can argue that if there are systems in place blocking us from being able to participate in democracy, that we should get rid of them, right? And if there's anyone that uh, disagrees, then we should doubt their, those motives. The world is changing and it's changing fast. Ethnic studies provide students the tools that they need to be able to understand the new, more inclusive world. It will create a more united, understanding, and stronger America. Thank you. Diego Puga Escobar. Hello. Um, Hello, my name is Diego Puga Escobar, and I am here on behalf of BHC and La Cosecha. Uh, I am for ethnic studies. I am actually currently a senior at Alisa High School. Um, I guess the reason I'm here is to be able to advocate for that. I've been hearing a lot of different conversations and a lot of different perspectives as in regards to ethnic studies, some as far as um, creating racism and a little bit of space between us. But if we look and we open our eyes, we'll realize that that space has always been with us. There's been space and division always. What we're trying to do is to be able to teach our people, our students, our correct history. When I go online, depending on what I decide to search up, if I have the intuition and I have the guide and I want to be able to research these things, I will easily find these online. That's not my job. My job isn't to go out of my way to find my history. My history should be taught. My history should be shown in these schools. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I post that I saw on Instagram. I saw, I heard uh, somebody say that we get a lot of our, some of the information we find on social media, whether it's from YouTubers, TikTokers, or any social, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, whether it's influencers. And earlier today, this day, I saw that 
And who knows? You're right. Maybe wrong. Maybe incorrect. But that's what I would like to be able to prove in schools, to, for it to be taught by our teachers, by intellectuals that are going out of their way to learn this in order to provide back for their community. What I saw earlier today, I saw, I saw a post for the Sherman Indian School Cemetery, a cemetery that was created for these Indian kids. Not a playground, rather a cemetery. Who knows, maybe this picture is edited and fake and really great, really great edited. It's fake, however, it may be. But what I would like to be able to know is to get these, the factual evidence, to be able to get my truth, to be able to understand who I am, to be able to know who are people, 